Hello and welcome back to another episode of the She Invests podcast with your hosts. I am Allie Fugit. And I'm your host, Carrie Douglas. And we are She Invests. Uh, today we have a very special guest on. Uh, I'm going to let Carrie introduce her, but she has got a lot of cool endeavors going on and some that I think you guys are really going to love to hear about, but some exciting stories of how she got started. So Carrie, without further ado. Yes. Today we will be talking with Stephanie Thorpe. She and her husband are a power couple who invest diversely in real estate. They are from Buford, South Carolina, and they own Toss International. They have three kids, and we're really excited to hear about their most recent real estate endeavor, which is in the U.S. Virgin Islands. So welcome, Stephanie, to the show. Hey, thank you guys for having me. Yes, well, thanks for being on the show. Um, we are excited to hear about this. So I think our first question we want to know, Stephanie, is uh, currently what property class are you investing in and what led you to invest in that vehicle? So we are, I, I'll, I'll back up and I'll, I'll, I'll add a little bit to that. So when we first got started in seriously trying to invest in real estate, we were, we're, we, everybody tells you to pick a path, pick an avenue, pick one thing, pick, pick something that you, you like, or pick something that is accessible to you. But we just, we kind of found just random, random deals that we had. Um, we had a storage unit and a apartment complex and raw land and a planned unit development. So it was, it was, just all over the board. And it was really hard to pick one thing. And I, I'm going to answer the second half of the question first. <laughs> yeah. So, um, we were, we were regular, like we were working, um, nine to five jobs. Both of us were working nine to five jobs and, um, Jimmy got called out to work one night and it was freezing rain and he worked on the railroad and freezing rain for the rail means really bad things. And so it worried me and I, I never slept when he got up late at night to go. And we were, we were investing little by little trying to figure out what, what path we were supposed to take. And he got called out that night and I sat up and I couldn't sleep and I got a bottle of wine and I drank some wine and I watched these two girls on TV remodel a motel in Canada. And I'm sure that you've seen the show. Motel Makeover. <laughs> <laughs> I, watched, I watched them go and they were trudging back and forth in the snow and it was cold and they just looked miserable. And I, I drank the wine and drank the wine and I watched the entire series by myself and my bottle of wine. And by the end of it, I had joined like 15 Caribbean Facebook pages and put out into the world that I wanted to buy a boutique hotel in the Caribbean because I was not going to remodel a motel in the snow. <laughs> so I, I joined all these groups and I put out this, I put out to the world, message me what you have. I want to, you know, I want to see what's out there. And I woke up the next morning and my phone had a bazillion messages on it, trying to go through the messages and figure out what was real and what wasn't. And I got to one message and it seemed pretty real and seemed the, the, the person sent in the message seemed, you know, intelligent and told me a little bit about the resort that he had and it wasn't up for sale yet, but he was considering it. So he told me what it was, where it was. And I will be completely honest until that moment. I had no idea where St. Croix United States Virgin Islands was. I, I had, I had a general conception that it was in the Caribbean in you know, somewhere, but no, no real idea of where. So I, I pick up the phone and I asked Siri, Siri, where, where is St. Croix? And it pulls up and it's like smack dab in all the Caribbeans next to Puerto Rico. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is awesome. And it's still the United States. So absolutely. And I say, okay, I, I want to come look at it. And he says, okay. And he sends me financials and we go over it and I'm, we're trying to plan a trip and I'm trying to figure out the best way to tell Jimmy. And <laughs> I asked him, I said, well, I, I, I'm ready to come look, but financials look good. Like, let me, let's come look at it. And he says, well, my family will be down there December 1st. And I said, well, that just so happens to be Jimmy's birthday. So I was like, I'm taking you on a trip for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> this story just gets better. <laughs> that's, how you, that's how you get a reluctance help on board. Like, I'm just going to take you on a trip. 
Uh, but I eventually had to say what because I wanted him to see everything before we went so that he could have a chance to look at the numbers and like you know have a have a really good idea and a mindset before we went. So I did end up telling him before we went, but that was kind of how I broke the ice. So um, we went, and honest to goodness, that is literally how we started um, investing in what we currently invest in and what we've currently, you know, we found we didn't find the path, the path found us. So we are, we are investing in more, um, more hotels actually. So we're by the end of this month, we will probably be able to add, uh, Costa Rica to our, um, to our lineup of what we can offer. And I'm super excited about that. And it just seems like the path was right for us. And it, it felt like, like I said, it felt like the path found us. We did not have to try that hard. It was something that, that we, it's, it's our lifestyle, it's who we are. So it was just, it was an easy transition for us to that say, okay, amazing. now we're, we're going to own a hotel. That's so cool. That is, that is amazing. And I can't, I, we, Kyle and I are actually coming down, um, in August oh, to yeah. see you guys. So I'm excited to see everything and see the progress. Oh, um, yeah. We've been, we've been following you on socials. Oh yeah. You'll see some of our, oh, like we're, we're trying to do like five at a time. So we, we never wanted to shut down. And, um, the slow time for us is in the middle of the year, believe it or not, like St. Croix, the Virgin islands was more or less kind of adopted by snowbirds. So people that spend half the year here spend half the year, the colder pop half the year in the Virgin Islands. So um, this is our slow time, which it's not super slow for us, but we've, we've tried to set aside five bungalows at a time to go through and renovate five at a time. And that way you hopefully don't hear a lot of the construction. You don't hear, you don't see debris, you don't see anything and we don't have to close down. So we're still a hundred percent in operation and just, running below the radar to get things renovated. That's awesome. Yeah. Good for you. That, that's a good plan, but much better than what Carrie and I have currently going on for oh, hours, no. right? right? We're just, we're, well, we completely shut down and then Carrie, Carrie's got, well, similarly, Carrie's kind of working on what, like slowly. Yeah. But, um, I'll have phases too, so I won't have to completely shut yeah. down, but it's, it's phases. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. It, it all depends on what you have. Like we're, we have actually, we have individual bungalows. So ours are completely separate. Like it's a tiny little house. So to, to section off five of those was the easiest way for us to be able to manage and not, not just to manage the construction, but to manage the material delivery. Yeah. So trying to get everything in and make sure that we have enough to complete before we even start to, you know, undo the envelope. That makes sense. And it was, and it's nice that you guys are able to section it off like that because like a regular like hotel, yeah. it's, it's very hard, right? Even if you, even if you wanted to go row by row, everyone else can still hear everything. They're going to exactly. still see everything. So, exactly. Exactly. so that, that's us. That That's, that's what we're going through. So we just had to shut everything down. So, um, so we know about like your, your current resort. So like, just tell us a little bit more about your resort. So like, Tell us about how many units you have on there. And um, I, I'd love to know the process. Like, obviously, it was rentable, right, when when you went in. Um, but, yeah, I'd love to know, like, kind of, like, some changes. Like, what, what's been the process that you've gone through? Okay. So, uh, when we first purchased, it, I, I would use the word rentable very loosely. It, it was being rented, but it was not in good shape at all. Um, so we, we focused on really life safety first. And I know that sounds crazy to buy something that is not safe for people to be around, but that's exactly that's, what was happening. Pretty sure it that's was, a staple of our portfolio. Yeah, that, doesn't, that, doesn't sound crazy to me. that sounds like, that sounds like sweat equity. Woo -woo. Yes, right. I, and truly like, so I, we're who we are and I probably should preface with this. So who we are as, um, you know, our, our regular everyday, Jimmy is a contractor. Um, he has his contractor or had his contractor's license. Um, I don't know that he's going to renew it or not, but he, he could do both residential and commercial. Um, I am a residential and commercial building inspector. 
-hmm. And I'm also a residential and commercial plans examiner. So um, both of us, both of us worked different sides of that desk and he did the construction and I did, I was actually the plans examiner for the town of Lufton for quite some time. Okay. But we, together, we have the knowledge to be able to, you know, tackle pretty much anything. So when we first came in, that was our priority and, you know, the insurance to have a, to have, like you guys know, to have a commercial project is, you know, ungodly. So the last thing that you want is for somebody to get hurt. Mm -hmm. So our, our first focus was life safety. So there was, um, it's, it's different on the islands. Everything is much more laid back. It's not, um, it's not like you would go to sandals and have a vacation. It doesn't, it doesn't look like that. It's, it's very, um, it's very island. It's very, it's very laid back. So, um, we focused on life safety first, which meant that we took we took probably five bungalows out of circulation immediately, and there's 50 of them, so it wasn't a huge loss. We saw 45 in operation, um, but just I can remember pulling into the resort when we first went to look at it, and it was I hated it. I hate, it looked like a I mean. Imagine, and I'm not saying anything because I grew up in a trailer park, but it literally was a trailer park on the water that had been abandoned 20 years ago. That's what it looked like. And the grass was six foot high and there was wires hanging from things and it was, it was awful. So we took care of all the ground maintenance, all loose wires, all like just everything that you could possibly imagine. And the second step for us was really, we are in, you know, it's not, it's not a foreign country. It's still the United States, but technically it's Virgin Island law. It's not, it's not, it's not mandated by any state law here. And it's, it, there is some federal involvement, but it more or less is Virgin Island law. So as far as what we knew for permitting, building inspections, uh, anything that has to do with um, OCM or um, the, the ocean management or runoff or anything like that is completely different. It's a whole nother ball game down there. And we knew that. So after making sure that everything was safe, we ran right up and we sat our butts in each one of the offices that had to do with all of the construction that we had anything to do with. So we sat in um, planning, we sat in development, we met with the, um, the water runoff, we met with um, environmental, because we are, we are literally on the beach. So there is a, a serious protection for everything that happens next to the water. And that resulted in a lot of information that we had no idea existed because we had never been, you know, we'd never done construction in the Virgin Island. So we got to know each office, each person, all the people that we'd be working with and literally said, everybody come to lunch. So we sat down, we told everybody at one time, like what we wanted to do. And it was extremely helpful. It was probably the best decision that we had made in the entire process of trying to get started. So then we'd had everybody knew everything that we were doing there was no questions it was it was awesome yeah it's the so expectations great. were clear yeah. well and to get yeah. everybody from those different offices on the same page that's huge yeah exactly and when we don't know who talks to who and how that how that ball rolls down the hill what you know each each rung of that ladder is important so if we if we're at the ground and we jump to nine and we jump past one through eight somebody is going to be mad. So we wanted to make sure that we knew, we knew what we were doing. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, have everybody in the same room. That's, that's so smart. That's so smart. Um, I probably have to take that advice into our next, our next deal. <laughs> Cause uh, we, that, we didn't do that, but. That's the best. Like I coming from somebody that used to work in the government office. If you, if you don't know what you don't know, go in there with your tail between your legs and, Tell them, I don't know. Please help me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because everything that you think, you know, even from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, even in the same state, is it changes. So you, you just you just don't know. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's great advice. Um, and, I, and I really hope that helps someone moving forward that's listening. Um, okay, so how did you decide to get into real estate? Invest. Oh, wait, wait, sorry. We already asked, we already answered that question. I apologize. Um, <laughs> well, no, so you, one, you talked a little bit about like your original investments, not your current vehicle, but the original mm -hmm. ones that you had. Um, you were just kind of investing slowly, right? And was, yeah, go ahead. I'm what sorry. kind of got you started in that? And then would you say that this, you know, resort is like where you transitioned from having W2 jobs to going full in? Or, or tell me more about that yes that's so we like i said uh, i was a i'm a building inspector and a plans examiner and jimmy was in construction so um together we have done multi-million dollar projects as far as like we we have we have remodeled several several of the historic hotels downtown charleston um we've done we've done a, a serious amount of construction but it was all for other people yeah. so we would watch and learn and it was it was a really good way to learn because and this is awful but we learned on somebody else's dime so we were getting paid to learn so we watched what they were doing and how they did what they did and said you know what why are we, why are we not doing this like we could we could do this like we're doing we're doing the work for them to reap the benefits in the long run like we have a short term game but like we're like once we finish this we're done yeah what would it be like to be on the other side of the desk right exactly so we said you know we should try this so we started small and we built um we built a house and sold a house and it gave us enough money to say okay now we could do a pretty large project what should we do and we wanted to do something good at the same time so we um we actually did a a planned unit development in a little town next to us and we made it we didn't label it affordable housing but we made it affordable so we tried to keep the cost low and um and planned it all out and we actually we actually did really really well with that so it was kind of like a it was a build to sell not build to rent because we wanted to test the waters and see what would happen and it went really well and it caught the eye of somebody else that was trying to do what we were doing, but on a larger scale than we were. So they approached us and said, you know, like, we want to build apartments. Like we saw what you guys did. Would you partner up with us? Like we want you to, we want you to do it. We'll fund it and you do it. And we're like, huh. And at the time we were not, we weren't ready for apartments and maybe we were, and we just weren't, I don't know, but whatever, everything happens for a reason. We said, no, we didn't want to do that. That was beyond us at the time. Like it was over, over our heads. We weren't, we weren't comfortable with it. We turned it down. So we went on about our merry way and we tried different things. We invested in actually several businesses before we decided to go full steam ahead with, real estate and our businesses did well and we are what I would consider serial entrepreneurs so we would start a business make it happen lay the groundwork and sell it mm -hmm. and that worked very well for us too and so then we had a nice little cash pot set aside and just said hmm what do we do now and um long story but my oldest son was um, diagnosed with cancer. So what that meant for us was that we needed insurance. So Jimmy stayed with his W-2 job and um, he went through four years of cancer treatment and he is perfectly fine. Uh, but mm -hmm. what that means for us is that as an 18 year old, he couldn't get insurance on his own so it meant that we had to have coverage that would give him coverage that would cover if he had a relapse. And as a mom and dad, it doesn't matter how you have to do that, you do it. So we kept a hold of our W-2s to make sure that he kept coverage to, in, just in case something happened and it came back. So he hit his 10-year mark of 
um, being cancer free. He was 24 years old. So he hit the 10 year mark. And at that 10, 10 year mark is when we decided we can, we can let go. We don't have to be scared anymore. And it just so happened that at the exact same time is when we found this resort. And it was, like I said, I don't think that you pick your path, the path that you, you just have to read the signs. So it was definitely our path picked up and everything happened exactly as it was happening. And we just said, okay. Awesome. That's an amazing <laughs> story. That's an amazing story. Uh, Some other so, time, I would love to dive into asking you more about when you said the words, we wanted to do something good and you created what was an affordable housing option. Like, I just, I think it's, I, I think what you, if I heard you right, it sounded like you wanted to do something to have a positive footprint on a community. Yeah. And, you know, we, we have a lot of other things we want to ask you about, but I think it's so important to just highlight that real quick because um, when we talk about, you know, adding value where there's a need, I, and then compensation comes back to you um, as a result. I think that's so important. Definitely. Definitely. That's, that's the focus on, I'm going to say almost everything that we do is that we don't, we don't want to come in and like take over. That's, that's never the goal. The goal is to be able to provide something that gives value to not just us, but to everybody that's involved with it. So we, the buying the buying the resort in St. Croix, we we had what we thought we wanted to do in our heads. Like we we had spent hours upon hours with um, an architect to try to lay out how we were going to do and what we were going to do and how it was going to be. And like it was a super modern looking turnover. And then when we got there and we absorbed all the needs of what everybody needed in the community it didn't look like what we had in our heads. And so the community is what keeps us alive there. Like we have made lifelong friends and actually lifelong partners. So we're, we, we listened very intently when we got there because you can't, especially coming in to somewhere that no one knows you, you can't just go in like a bull in a china shop. You've got to tiptoe through the tulips and figure out what you need to do. Like you, you have to listen. And that's, that's, we, we stopped, actually, we, we could have started construction quite some time ago, but we changed our idea and our concept once we got there, because what was needed by the people that are there all the time, and those are the people that keep us alive, was not what we had in our heads coming in. Yeah. So. That's so it, neat. That's important. Yeah. 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 And so we're, we're just now. Actually, we like I said, we could have started before, but we we backed up and we changed our plan, and we didn't want to disturb any more of the ocean than what we had to. We have sea turtles and starfish and stingrays, and I, our our ocean life in our bay is like the best thing under the sun. Like I love just going out to the beach in the morning. So what we had planned was to take up that beach front and like make it, you know, the million dollar view for the most expensive rooms. But when we got there and figured out what we had, I'm like, I, I don't want to mess with this. I don't, yeah. wanna, I don't want to do this. We're not going to do this. We're, we're going to move back and we're going to do this instead. And so cool. it was, it was the best decision. Cause if we had gone ahead with our plans originally, I think that the people there would probably hate us. Right. Well, I think that there's like, there's a lot of power when you like, when you do like just a hotel, like in the States. Right. And it's just in a, it, it it's just a building. Right. Yeah. Then like changing the whole concept, the feel is completely different versus when you move down and you buy something on an Island. Yeah. There is so much power in conservation. Yeah. Because ultimately that, that is the reason that you're drawing your avatar there, right? They're coming for authenticity and that conservation allows for that authenticity of the experience. And, and that's what you're selling. And exactly. the, yeah, I was going to say there's a mark, even though you're not marketing a million dollar view, you can market the conservation and there's value in that for a traveler as well. 
You're exactly. may not be the exact same traveler, but there is definitely value to market there. That's you are exactly right. And that's why we paused when we got there and we fully absorbed what was needed and what was happening and what we were actually involved in. It wasn't what we had in our heads. So it was, it, don't get me wrong. It was actually a, it was a life changing moment. Like it, it completely changed who we are as people. And I, I consider myself to be a pretty grateful person anyway. And the same with, you know, the rest of my family, but to get there and be a part of like what, what they call is like the, I love it's a, it's a whole, it's a whole different thing. It's a whole culture of VI I love. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. whole different thing. It's, it's so great. And Costa Rica has the same feel and it's the same, the same genuine, just love of nature that it's, it's definitely, it's, it's so different. And so is that what's kind of drawing you to Costa Rica as yeah. another place yeah. to add to your portfolio? Yes. And it was actually, it was the, we were from our posts, this other person um, saw some of our stuff and they were like, Hey, I don't want to sell, but I see what you guys are doing. And my dad is sick and I have to leave. Mm -hmm. And if I was going to sell, I'd want to sell to somebody like you guys, because I can see who you are. Do you want to come look? So it wasn't on the market. We weren't looking. It was literally just, you know, somebody who has the same like mindset as we do. And we combined and made a team. So we're, it's, it's, I appreciate like exactly, exactly how everything happens and how it rolls. And like I said, you just, you don't pick your path, your path picks you. You just have to read the sign. And yeah, it, it'll, it'll work itself out. If it's meant to, it'll work itself out. I don't believe in trying really, really hard to get something done because it's not meant to be like, there's, there's some reason why you have all these red blocks. So, you know, open, a, open your different eye or what, whatever the case may be, take a different path. Yeah. But I, I love that you guys went down there with an open mind and like, um, we're able to encompass and embody that lifestyle, right? And like become a part of that community because so many developers now are more focused on the coin than they are with the community. So, um, so that that's huge. Um, oh, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm so sorry. I just wanted to like say, I don't know what's going on with my lights. So y'all just ignore <laughs> the, wit, the witchery that's going on. <laughs> I don't know no, behind me here. You're supposed to dance now. That's your strobe light. You're supposed to get up and dance. It's party time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it letting me know it's time to, time to exercise. <laughs> Um, I, will, I will add to what you just said there. It's kind of funny when we were looking at this resort, this, the resort in uh, St. Croix, it was not for sale either. Um, it just so happened that the resort that I went down to look at these, these guys that were selling the resort, we went down to go look at had this resort that we just bought under contract right before COVID. And they pulled out because of COVID because they didn't know it was going to happen. And they uh, showed us the resort and said, you know, if this was for sale, he might still sell it. And that's how we got to it. Otherwise, we would never have known. Can, and can I ask you, and, then, and it's okay if you don't want to answer, Stephanie, but I'm just curious, too, because our, um, our deal was basically like, I, I would basically call it semi off market. It just like the sellers really weren't convinced that they wanted to do anything because nobody wanted to give them what they wanted. But so did you guys, knowing that it was off market, were you able to work out better terms that way? And were you able to work out a seller finance deal or what happened with that? So it's really funny. Um, if it hadn't happened like this, we probably wouldn't have got the deal that we got. But the resort was actually, it was about to be taken over by Margaritaville, by Jimmy Buffett. Wow. So Jimmy Buffett Margaritaville um, corporate was down there when we went to go look and the owner did not like Jimmy Buffett was pushing the owner to sell. 
And they kept coming up with dollar figure, dollar figure, dollar figure, and the owner just did not want to give it to corporate anything. So when we showed up, it was just the right time because they were pushing so hard to purchase. So we were like, you know, just, 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 like, just, just, just. We're just not, two people. This isn't yeah. like a man of some kind of corporation. Yeah. So just a man we, and a woman showing up, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, he sent down his grandson and his grandson sat and talked with us and hung out with us for a week or 10 days or so. And um, we talked and talked and talked and. He said, okay, like, tell me what the offer is. And so we, we gave in our best offer and it was pretty similar to Margaritaville, but different in the terms that one, Margaritaville was coming in with all cash. We did not have all cash. Two, um, to get bank financing in the Virgin Islands is actually a little more difficult Unless you have somebody. Let's be clear, it's already difficult. Yeah. Even when you're yeah. not, even in yeah. the U.S. Like it's the. Yeah. Let's, let's shed light on that situation. You're exactly <laughs> right. You're exactly right. So, um, we had talked to the bank there, and um, we we had some other people that had had owned hotels there, so they came in with us to talk to the bank and, you know, kind of see what we could do, maybe possibly. And the bank was receptive, but nothing was going to move fast. So um, we took a step back and we said, okay, so here's the deal. We want to buy it, but trying to get the bank on board and your property is not in great shape. So the bank's going to be like, hmm, you know. And so we're like, so why don't we do this? And we came up with some pretty creative financing. Jimmy is the king of creative financing. Like Jimmy has, I don't know where his brain goes, but he is the king of creative financing. And he can make it to where, like, he would convince anybody that it's better off if they do it because of it. Like, it's, and it's really true, not just that he's some type of, like, salesman. He, like, it's, he really can work it out to where it wins. Everybody wins. And you okay. can't, you know. So, um, we came up with some creative financing and said, like, this would work out for everybody if you want to jump on board with this. And it was seller financing. We put down a very small amount and um, the seller financed the rest. That's um, awesome. That is amazing. But uh, you know what? But again, like, no, knowing what you guys have been through and everything on this, there is, and I'm sure that the seller was super satisfied again that you guys got it versus margaritaville because you guys preserved it yeah. and didn't make it and and i'm i have been to margaritaville's and i can tell you there's not a lot of preservation for <laughs> community and yeah. um land going on um yeah. they're they may seem tropical on the outside, but I don't think they're tropical on the inside. <laughs> so, yeah, I, uh, I, we, we got to meet some of, I, I, I don't even know who they were, but we got to meet some of the people that were from them. And I, they're, they're nothing against anybody, but they're not my people. <laughs> and that's okay to each their own, you know, <laughs> right, right. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so um, so I we did have a question for you, Stephanie. You mentioned to us uh, in um, you know previously that someone's education and credentials don't predict the outcome of their success in investing. So, what do you think makes like people successful in investing? Uh, I think a lot of it is is chance. It's a lot of at the right place at the right time with the right people. And even if they're not the right people, it's always good to talk because those people might know other people that might know other people. So I, I think investing in yourself and investing in your network is probably the biggest thing. If I, if I had money to spend, I would spend it sending my kids to go explore everywhere. Go everywhere that they can go. I don't think that and I, I'm, I have nothing against college either. I just don't think that it's the path for everybody. Not everybody learns to sit down and to have somebody in front of them to teach them how to do what to do. I think, I, I mean, so Jimmy, Jimmy did not go to college. Um, Jimmy is a second generation contractor, actually. So he was working when he was like nine years old. 
Like he has had a hammer in his hand and he has learned the tough way and the, you know, the school hard knocks. And I think that there's something to be said for that. So he's, he's been in every, every avenue of, you know, construction, land development, um, business owner, builder, neighborhood development, and, you know, now resort ownership and actually like renovation. So I, I think there's something to be said for real world experience. And there's nothing that could match that. Like I, I went to college, but my college degree has nothing to do with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same here. Yeah. Nothing at all. So I mean, and I, I spent I don't I don't know forty thousand dollars of my own money to to have a degree that I am not using one bit. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I I was a. I just want to like just say that I was a high school teacher and I say the exact same thing that you and I would I would literally say it in the classroom that college is not for everyone that you yeah. guys need to like pursue a passion and like yeah. find what that is. Yeah. Figure out figure out yourself. I I this this is perfect right here. This is my I don't know if you can see my sign. What does it say? Life isn't about finding yourself. It's about creating yourself. Ooh, I that love is that. amazing. I love that. I think that's, I think that's probably my life motto. Like I, I don't think, I don't think that you can just like, you're not going to find anything cause you like you, you're built by your experiences, you know? So you're going through life. And if you came out of college and you're a construction manager and you've never touched construction before, you are in big trouble. I, I wouldn't hire you. I would hire somebody that's been on the construction site for the past five years working hard and I don't care if they have a degree or not. I can I can teach them how to manage. I can't I can't teach them in, you know, a couple of weeks how to how to construct a office building. Sure. You know? Right. So I, I, I believe in, I believe in education of experience. So you, you, you get out there and you do it, you put your hands on it and not just that, if you're not doing that, you're closed off. You're closed off to that only, only the small little piece of information that you learned in that book. There yeah. is so much more and it doesn't mean very much to read it in black and white. If you're experiencing it, you're going to remember it. It's going to be a piece of you. And, and you're going to learn how important whatever that is, is it's, it, to read it in the book doesn't make it important or doesn't make it last either. Yeah. But to put it to use is what makes it, you know, that's, that's what makes your life. I, I think that's beautiful. And I think that your uh, little mantra behind you there is, uh, is beautiful. But um, the, what I would love to like, just kind of like say about that is uh, when I went to college for, I went for, had a science degree and a secondary education uh, degree. And um, so I knew all the things of science. I knew how to use all the science equipment. Um, but when I got to the classroom, no course in college taught me the life experience I needed to, to work a copy machine. <laughs> okay. And so, and I, I, I am like full transparency guys. Like I, my first week as being like an on-site student teacher, well, guess what the student teachers have to do? Like we have to make all the copies and everything. And the teacher doesn't show you that because she doesn't have time. So she just hands you the sheet and she sends you to the copy machine. And you get down there and you stare at this machine that because at school systems, they have codes and stuff. You have no oh, way too many buttons. There's too many buttons and you have to enter codes because they track how many copies you're making. And, she had given me this list of like codes to put in and I had no idea what I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> and so I used to tell my students that like, guys, like I went and I got a degree and I know all the facts because exactly what you said, right? I know the things in the book, but it was the application and the yeah. experience. I, I had been trained to do a job, but I had not been given the experience I needed yeah to specifically with the equipment, but in general, I had not been trained with the experience to do the job 
accurately. And so I think that that's amazing. And I love that like you are aligned in that same view as I am because not, I, I mean, just in the world today, you're just completely pushed and, um, you know, go to college, go to college, go to college because your parents didn't go to college and the parents that didn't go to college that didn't make it are like, go to college, go to college. Cause that's what I didn't do. But then they're just not, they just didn't have the mentorship and the experience or the drive to create themselves in a different, in a different avenue. So, yeah, I agree. I think it's, I think it's a lot of how, like, how you brought up makes a difference for sure. And then life experiences that you allow yourself make the difference too. So I, I, it's just knowing yourself and putting yourself out there. Yeah. And providing that space for a growth mindset for, for you and, and the people around you. Yeah. Um, so uh, we have a couple, we want to be respectful of your time, Stephanie. So uh, we have last couple of questions here. Um, one question I'll, I'm going to let Carrie ask it. Uh, Cause this is one of Carrie's favorite questions, but we ask it to everybody. So, so when we talk about just investing in general, how often are you looking at and tracking your personal financial statement? What does that look like for you and what metrics are you tracking? So I will be completely honest, and this is probably not the answer that you want, but I don't. Honesty is good. <laughs> no, we love honesty. We love transparency. <laughs> I don't. Jimmy, on the other hand, does. So I am, I'm kind of like the dreamer of the two of us. I'm the, I'm the lofty artsy one. Mm -hmm. And he is the numbers guy, put it together, like the end deal maker. I'm like, oh my gosh, this could be this. And if we turn this this way, oh, if we added a this, we could have two of those, not one. And I, I'm, I'm that person. You're the visionary and, he's the interviewer, <laughs> and that's perfect. You need one of each. So, <laughs> so I am that's definitely it. not that person. I track our success literally by happiness. And that may sound just completely dorky, but nope. that's why we're all doing this. Honestly, yeah, that's exactly we're yeah. it's that certain, freedom. We're looking for a certain quality of life that is achieved maybe not through finance, maybe through finance, but through some kind of freedom, right? Like that's what most of us are on this journey for. And so I think that's a great metric to track. Yeah. Happy. Tell me more. That is literally what we do. Like we are, Jimmy and I are polar opposites of each other. So he can do those things in his head. Like he could, he can math out whatever. Actually, we had some friends of ours that were down this week and they came to visit St. Croix with us and she is a math teacher. And so she gives us a problem at brunch one day after we had all had a drink It said, figure out this math problem. And it was like multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, da, 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 da. So all of us come up with a different answer. Jimmy is very sure of himself and he's got the answer. He was right. We were all wrong. So that's why, like I, I say, you're like, you're, your path finds you. So I, my path, math did not find me on my path. <laughs> it didn't. It found me. Have different <laughs> strengths. Math doesn't need to be everyone's strength. <laughs> so I, I think, I think that too. So like, um, I've always said like, you'll never know a hundred percent of everything. It's just not going to happen. Right. So don't kill yourself to do it. If you know a hundred percent of 80% of the information, you're doing all right. Yeah. So I just choose to leave math as that 20% that I don't know. And I don't need to know it. Cause you know, <laughs> but, you're, but you're tracking a quality of life then. And yeah. you obviously seem very happy with your current situation. And you had shared a little bit about us, a little bit with us before about, um, you know, how you, how you travel back and forth to, to the Virgin Islands and um, and it seems like that's really working really well for you. So it is. We have we have the best outlook. Um, I am if you would have asked me 10 years ago if we would ever be here, I would say no way. No, that's 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 impossible. But the more that you like I said that like we we consider people kind of part of how we track our metric like the more people that we have in our circle that are doing what we're doing 
the better we're doing. We're, we're going to do better. The more people that are in our circle that are doing what we're doing, we can't, we can't go wrong. Yeah. Cause some, one of those people is going to need help with something, or I'm going to need help with something. And one of those people are going to be able to help me. And so the, you know, the, we just, we just roll on like that. So that's, I, we, I'm super happy with where we are and what looks like is on the horizon and we'll just keep doing what we're doing. And when we're not happy doing it anymore, we'll change to do something else. Yeah. Can I ask you a question that we didn't prepare to ask you, but just yeah. came into my head. Um, I've been thinking a lot about um, you have mentioned like different relationships and, and partnerships that you might have with other people. I've been thinking a lot about alignment and um, just having choices and not having to work with everybody if they don't seem like they're my kind of people or in alignment with where I'm going. Oh yeah. Um, so share about that if you would, just how, what your experience has been in that. Uh, so we, we've had one not so fantastic experience with that and it started out wonderful and it was with somebody that we didn't really know, but knew of them instead and knew a little bit of their background and thought this is a match made in heaven and it ended up not at all. And personally, they're a fantastic person. But as far as the role that they were supposed to take in what we were doing, they failed tremendously. Okay. And I, I, they, they are aware of how we feel. If they hear this, they'll probably know who, like, they'll be like, that's me. <laughs> but it was, it was not, it was not a good relationship. And I am not the person that holds that back either. So I, I find it very freeing just to say from the get go, Hey, like personally, I think you're fantastic. But as far as this business deal goes, you, you're not, you're not the piece of the puzzle that I'm missing. Right. And I think that that's super important to be upfront and, you know, be upright about it because if you're not, I, I kind of feel like you get married, like you get married to the other people you have got to work together. And so if you don't have the same vision or the same alignment, you're in trouble because it's going to end up, it, it, you're, there's going to be a fight somewhere down that road, unless you're the person that just kind of says, okay, do whatever you want. But it's ultimately your tails on the line for whatever goes wrong. So like you have to, you have to put together your team as if you're getting married, you are marrying them. Yeah. But after that first experience, I think we learned a good bit about what the people really look like that we want on our team. So I don't, I, I, I'm who I am. So I know that I need to align myself with somebody that is, you know, somebody that maths well, and I can, I can do all the permitting, everything required in that end. I can, I can talk, I can dream, I can, I can put things together. I can connect the dots with different departments. I'm, I'm very good at that. I'm, I can facilitate all that. But as far as the actual, like, push the go button, this is where we're going to start at. I'm not that person. Right. So right. you have to figure out in your puzzle what piece you are and then fill in your puzzle with the other pieces that you know that you're not. But the hardest part about that is admitting to yourself the puzzle piece that you are. You have to be straight with yourself. You can't just say, yeah. Oh yeah. I, I can like, no, it's, it doesn't work like that. And that was actually really, really hard for me when we first started is because I am a type A personality. Like I want to do it all myself and that way I know that it's done right. And it's done on time. And I'm not going to ask anybody because it's going to take longer for me to explain it to you than it would be for just to do it myself. Yeah. And that has since changed so drastically. And I'm so without sounding like a dork, I'm so proud of myself for like giving that up. You should like, be, yeah. Ordering groceries this morning, I can tell you that five years ago, I would never have let somebody go pick out my own groceries because I want to make sure that the fruit is good. And I want to make mm -hmm. sure that the banana is the brightness that I want it to be. And I blah, 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 blah. <laughs> But now I'm like, whatever, when they bring it, you're going to eat it. So I don't care like if the bananas have a bruise, we're going to make a banana pancake or something if you don't want to eat the banana. Yeah. yeah. So 
it's 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 hard and you have to learn how to give up a little bit of control because you're you cannot do it all yeah yeah i think some of that's valuing your own time too right like not just relinquishing some of that control but it's learning the value of yourself and the value of your time and and where you where your effort should be spent because of your strength absolutely and i think that that really goes back to the name of you guys's podcast because I think, I mean, we're women, right? But like you, you're in this world where you have almost got to put on your man pants and be like, you know, you're going to listen to me. Because there's a lot of people that still to this day don't look at a woman as the person that should be doing what we're doing. Sure. So, but at the same time, we're women and we want to be feminine and we want to take time to ourselves. And like, I so need to get my nails done. and. <laughs> Right, right, right. So yes, like to value your own time and like be a woman at the same time and you're an investor and like find that fine line. And at the same time, being a mom, so you're, you know, if you've got kids or whatever, like you're, yeah, your time is valuable and invest in yourself. And I think that kind of makes the whole world go round because you're, if you're not happy with yourself, you're not happy with your marriage. If your marriage isn't good, your business is not good. Like I don't, I don't care who you are. I don't care. Like that is how it goes. If your if your marriage is not good, your business is gonna suck. There you go. Perspective, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I love the I love the turn <laughs> that took because I I think I mean Allie probably needed to hear some of that, but like for me, I'm really good at identifying um, my strengths and weaknesses, and I'm really good at delegating the things that I'm not good at and that I don't even enjoy. Like it doesn't bring me energy. So I'm really good at finding a player to take that piece. Um, it's just, sometimes I think I jump on the first person who meets that description, who's like, Ooh, you can do these tasks. This sounds great. And I, and I don't, maybe they, maybe they aren't in alignment with like my personal, mission or vision or, or whatever that might be. Right. And I, and I'm not talking about business partners. I'm talking about vendors, right? Yeah. Like, like we've talked a little bit about business partnerships in the past too, and, and, and how those can change. And, and you're right. It is a marriage, but even with a vendor, you might not be marrying them. And, and that's what I'm going through right now. It is even, even though I'm not marrying them, it's just like, it, is this the right person to do business with, you know, like, are they in alignment with the values that I have? And, um, even though they're not a part of my business, I feel like if the values are, are misaligned, sometimes it still throws off what we're trying to do, you know? Absolutely. Not just that, but you're, you're giving them your money. You're giving them your, you know, so if you're paying for, if you're paying for somebody to be in your world, I, I would definitely want them to be somebody who I want to be in my world. I'm paying you to be there. Right, right, right. <laughs> so interesting. Well, anyway, that took an interesting turn. Thanks for letting me ask a, a non-planned question. Um, I think we just have like one or two questions left because we do want to be respectful of your time. Um, what would you have done differently knowing what you know today? I don't think I would do anything differently. Okay. I, I, I would have, if I could, if I could change it all, I would like make it go faster, Mm -hmm. but I, everything that happens, I truly believe happens for a reason. It makes you who you are. It, it leaves a little imprint on your soul. And so you have to have all those experiences to get to where you are. So I don't, I wouldn't remove Creating yourself along the way, right? Exactly. Exactly. So I, 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 I don't, I don't know that it would all turn out the same if I hadn't had what I had. So it's just. I'll just take it. I like it. We'll just stick with it. <laughs> awesome. That's a that's a beautiful answer. And like, there's beauty in accepting it and accepting the journey and, and not changing it. Oh. Um, our last question for you, and before we ask the last question, um, is there places that people can follow you if they want to follow your journey with, uh, you know, St. Croix and Costa Rica um, oh. and, and your other endeavors? Right now, I, I'm on Facebook. I do have an Instagram, but I hardly use it. I need to use it. So I'm on Facebook as Stephanie Rudd Thorpe, which totally throws everybody because it's my maiden name. But back when I created Facebook, 
I thought if I had went to school with anybody, they're not going to find me as Stephanie Thorpe. So I put my maiden name on there so everybody could find me. And turns out it's a Southern thing for you to let go of your middle name and keep your original last name, your maiden last name and make that your middle name. So everybody was like, oh, I can't believe that you did that. Well, I'm not technically from South Carolina. I'm from Illinois. So I heard holy hell over doing that. And I was like, that's so stupid. I didn't even, I didn't actually change my name. I just, I figured it'd be easier for people to find me. I, I love that you just said that you're from <laughs> Illinois and I hear so much Southern in your accent and it just makes me so happy. <laughs> I've been here forever. And then my girlfriends that were down for the week, they're all like super, super Southern. So I, it rubs off. I can't get rid of it. Yeah. I get, uh, I get made fun of a lot for my accent. Um, so uh, I just love that you've like adapted a little bit of that Southern twang. Um, okay. Yeah. And then uh, what about do, does your resort, do you guys have socials for your resort that they can follow if they want to come stay? Yes, we are. We, we have a website, which our marketing team just started to redo. So they're, we're bungalows on the bay.com. Bungalows on the bay. I'm and finding I'm it right now. And on Facebook, we're Bungalows on the Bay, too. So you'll get to watch some of our renovations and what we have going on. And we're just about to introduce something super special. And I am so excited for it and so proud of it. It's nothing. It's not like a concert or anything. It's something that I have very near and dear to my heart. And so I, I cannot wait to put it together and to open it up to everybody. And it will... I think it'll be a, a, it'll be a tourist destination in itself. That's awesome. awesome. I'm so I, I, I know me too. Like if, if nobody wants to go follow right now, then uh, they're going to be missing out. So uh, go follow bungalows on the Bay on Facebook and go to their website and keep a lookout for Stephanie's surprise yeah. that she has coming. Yeah, um, I'm excited. So our last question, Stephanie, is what is the most exciting thing you have ever done on this investing journey? Oh, gosh. The most exciting thing. I don't know. Where do I start? <laughs> it's all exciting. Um, I honestly, I think, I think the leap to St. Croix was probably... I don't think anything could top that. Like that is, that has got to be the most exciting because that is literally what opened the door to this journey that we're on now. So up to this point, I will say that that was the most exciting. The most exciting thing was literally to sign that piece of paper saying that we now own 50 bungalows in the Caribbean. Like I, who would, I would, I would never have thought and it, like that, that has definitely got to be the most exciting. Like we, we bought a probably, probably beyond necessary information, but we bought like a $300 bottle of liquor and we sipped that thing. Like it was like, we licked it, like just to make sure that we didn't like, you know, but we were so proud of ourselves and so excited. And we sat on that beach and the broken damn lawn chair and, there was, I don't think there was anybody at the resort and we sipped that liquor and it was like the best moment and it was sunset and the water was rippling and I could see out to the, the K that's just beyond our bay and I, you can hear the water and I am just in awe of my husband and I and we have, look what we did, look what we did. And it, I, as a couple, and we both worked and worked and worked and worked and worked to get to that point. So as a couple and as an investor, business owner, all, all, all of the above, we were, that has got to be the most exciting point. And yeah. it, was, it was literally, it was literally almost 10 years to the day that Jackson was 10 years clear from cancer. And it was, it was the end all be all like of an era. It was like the best little last page in the book and then open up a brand new book. That's amazing. Well, what a moment to relish into. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, 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 you should. I, I probably was trying to move on too quickly. We should relish in that, right? Like, no. <laughs> um, but I, I think we've talked a little bit, Allie and I have talked a little bit about like the gap and the gain, right? So 
basically we all have goals of where we're trying to go. And so many times when we're entrepreneurs, we're focused on like, I need to get here. I need to get here. But you took time to reflect on where you've come from and notice how much gain you had had. And um, to really enjoy that and be proud of that is so important for our psychology um, because it's, it's a positive reinforcement instead of this like, I'm not good enough yet. I have to keep going, keep going, keep going. Right. So I think it's so great that you take time to just be proud of, of all those pieces. I I think especially too, like we're not just that, but like we're as a couple having all those goals and, and they're individual and as a couple, but having all those goals puts pressure on not just you, but your relationship too. So if your partner if your partner, if your business partner is your husband, there is a, it's almost impossible to turn off business partner, turn on husband. Mm-hmm. Like you, you can't, you, it, it, it's, it's almost impossible. I can't do it. At some point or, they have to merge, right? Yeah. I, I feel like if I'm mad at him during the day for what something he did for our business, I'm mad at him at night as my husband, because he's also my business partner. Like, I'm like, Oh my God. So we, we had to figure out like how to, how to like, take a back seat and like put everything away. And then like, he's just my husband for tonight. Like, we're not going to talk business. So we, we like, we will put on, he doesn't snorkel, but he'll go down to the beach with me and we'll, he'll get in the water and he'll sit and we'll, I'll snorkel. And uh, it's our reminder to ourselves. And we tell everybody there, we're not at work. You don't see us. Don't bother us. I don't care if the building's on fire. This is our afternoon. Don't talk to us. And we will go and we will have our time and enjoy our beach and our resort because it, we remind ourselves why we work as hard as we work. And we have date nights and I make him do, I make him do romantic things for me, even if he doesn't want to. And I have to remind him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it, I think it all like wraps up into one, like you've got to mind, body, soul, you know, you, you have to, you have to have all of that. Yeah. It's so important that you're taking, you're designing your life and you're designing time in your schedule to have those moments too. You have to, otherwise it'll be gone. It'll pass you by and you won't, right. you look not, back and under, say, exist. I worked, yeah, I worked all this. I, I did all this. Look at all this that I have. Look at all. And you'll be, you know, 70 years old and you'll be like, well, I never had fun or I never, I never saw this or went there. So we, that's, that's definitely not who we are. (laughs) Good. Good. So great. Well, thank you so much for your time. And this was just such a fun conversation. I can't wait to continue to follow your journey. Um, I'll be watching. I appreciate you guys. It was, it was, it was really cool to get the questions and to to think through like I, I I don't think that I don't think that I have reflected on myself like that in a long time. So I think that it's really cool to like think about the questions and like to I, I don't know, I think it I think it helps you identify even more like who you are and and where you started and where you're going. So Good. I, yeah. I, I appreciate, appreciate the journey. Experience. <laughs> well, thank you. We we appreciate you coming on. We appreciate you be willing to be open and transparent with our with us and our audience. And and we hope to have you back on because I want to have you back on when you get this Costa Rica deal going. And I want to hear the details on that. Fingers crossed. We go. Oh, it 20th. will happen. <laughs> we're the twenty seventh. I think the twenty seventh, and we're we're doing a little more like boots on the ground uh, investigations, and then we'll. We'll see. So if it's meant to be, it will. And if it's not, it won't. And I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. And something else will come along. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Good. There we go. Well, we'll, we'll keep up to date with you. And, and all of our followers will definitely go and, and be looking out for your uh, upcoming endeavors at uh, your current bungalows on the Bay. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate thank you. you. Yes. Thank you.